Fritz Dick, Simulation Specialist at the Beeling Simulation Center at the University of Buffalo. So you need a functional uterine cervix model. Who doesn't, right? Today we're going to build this model. I know, doesn't look like much, piece of PVC pipe and a cap, but this little powerhouse can do endometrial biopsies, DNCs, and a host of other gyne procedures that I don't even know yet. So let's take a minute and put this little guy together. Before we get started, let's take a look at all the supplies we're going to need to create our cervix uterine model. Of course, we're going to need our 1-inch PVC pipe with accompanying end cap. Don't forget about your PVC cement to create a watertight seal. We're going to need unflavored gelatin, food coloring, water, and a mixing container, saran wrap, tape, a specula, utility knife, rubber bands, marking pen, large syringe, some type of a dense foam material to create your vaginal canal, an empty tissue box. And don't forget the refrigerator to help cool your gelatin. Okay, first and easiest thing to do is take your one inch diameter pipe, put some PVC cement around the outside of it, take your end cap, and attach it to the end of your pipe. And let it dry. Usually takes a few minutes, set it down, come back to it in a minute. Our next step is to make our gelatin. We're going to make two separate gelatins today. One is going to be for the return that you're going to get during your biopsy. And the second gelatin we're going to make is actually going to be a little bit thicker, which is going to be for uterine resistance, excuse me, cervical resistance. And we're going to start with our first gelatin. We're going to take about a half tablespoon of gel, unflavored gelatin, and we're going to mix that to about 200 milliliters of water. Once you do that, you mix it up really well. You can add a little bit of food coloring for effect. Once everything's mixed up real well, take a large syringe and then you can draw it into, you, into your syringe so you can have this as a nice controllable way of getting your gelatin into your cervical and uterine model. And now it's time to fill up your, your uterine model. What you're going to do is you take your gelatin filled syringe and fill up your model to about three quarters the height of your model. Um, usually takes about 40 mLs to fill it up. Once you got that, we're going to put it in the refrigerator and let it cool. While our gelatin is cooling in the, uh, the refrigerator, what we need to do is create our uh, vaginal canal and the box that's going to accept our PVC uterine model. So what we're going to do is take an extra model, trace the outline of the model actually in the center of the back of the box, just with a quick marker doesn't have to be perfect but just enough that you can trace around it. Then we're going to take our sharp knife, a uh, utility knife where we have uh, plenty of scalpels around and we're going to take and cut out our hole that we had just traced but make sure that you cut inside the actual mark that you put on the on the box that way it's going to create a nice tight friction fit for your uh, PVC pipe. Now that we've got our hole cut we're going to take a little time and actually place our foam that we have pre-cut earlier. So here's our foam. The one thing that we also did was we put a slit in the foam to simulate the vaginal canal. So we're going to take our foam, make sure that we're lining it up with our open end on, the, on our box. We're going to slide it in. Make sure that our slit is in the front, which it is. At this point we can close up the box and seal it up with a piece of tape. Put the tape on there, but don't put too much on because you're going to want access to get into uh, change either the foam or put anything else in the box that you may want. And the next step is to create your actual cervical resistance gel. What we're going to do here, basically the same thing we did before, but this time we're going to use a full tablespoon of gelatin to 200 milliliters of water. Once again, you're going to mix it up, put some food coloring in for a little added effect, although not necessary at this point because you're not going to get a return from this piece of the uh, or this set of gel and once again draw it up into a large syringe have it available so you can uh, put it into your cervical uterine model when it's ready. Now that our first layer of gelatin has cooled let's take our second layer our cervical resistance gel and we're just going to top off our PVC pipe and we're just going to put that right back in the refrigerator for another hour or two and let that cool down. Now that our gel has all cooled, our cervical model is ready to go. We're going to take our piece of saran wrap that we have already cut. Uh, don't worry about the size. The bigger is actually the better. That way you can move it around and use 
use it multiple times. We're going to pull the saran wrap tight on the model, the cervical model. We're going to hold it in place, put our rubber band down, and roll it down as far as we can. This tension here is actually going to create a nice tactile feel for our learners as they pass through the cervix. We're going to take our model, slide it into our pre-cut hole, push it in, and we are officially ready to do either a endometrial biopsy or a DNC. Okay, so we've created our cervix and uterine model. This is actually very functional. You can do a bunch of different procedures with this, but we're not done. Let's take this one step further. Welcome to the bonus section. If you're fortunate enough or lucky enough to have a Susie like we do, we're gonna show you how to take our model that we created earlier get it into Suzy, and we're going to increase the realism for our learners. One additional piece of equipment you're going to need to attach your uterus to Suzy is you're going to need a one inch coupling that you will wind up cutting in half that will be placed in Suzy, which will actually hold your uterus in place. First thing we're going to have to do is reveal Suzy's stomach, pull it back so we can see her insides. We're going to have to move her bladder out of the way revealing her existing uterus and fallopian tubes. We're going to have to remove this piece and the cervix that is inside her vaginal canal. Now that we've disassembled our uterus, our nut is away from our cervix, the next step is to take your half of your PVC coupling, take some PVC glue, cement, put it around the outside. The important part to remember here is that you're actually attaching this nut to the cut side of your PVC coupler and not to the, uh, the factory side. So we're going to put that, center it. Once that sets up and you're ready to go, this is what you're going to wind up with. So our final step is to place our cervix back into Suzy. We're going to take that, put it into our vaginal canal, and the threaded piece is actually going to come through the preset hole right there. Now we're going to take our nut attached to our half coupling thread it back onto her cervix. Only do it hand tight, doesn't have to be super tight, just as long as the, uh, the coupling isn't flopping around. So we're tight there. Last piece, take our cervix with our saran wrap, place it in the coupling. That accepts it quite nicely. Once again, doesn't have to be super tight, just enough to hold it in place. We're gonna set it back in place, close her up, and we're ready for our learners to do their procedures. So today we created our uterine model, adapted it into a tissue box to create a simulated vaginal canal, and then took it even one step further and moved it into our female mannequin to give a more high fidelity, realistic experience. If you have any ideas, feel free to contact us here at the Beeling Simulation Center. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.